evening and thank you so much for joining us at our summer home at the Saratoga Racecourse. I'm Lydia Colbita. And I'm Mark Baker. Welcome to our Traverse Special. We are just one day away from the capstone of the Saratoga meet, the Grade 1 $1.6 million Traverse Stakes. This year is shaping up to be a historic one. For the first time in 37 years, we have a Triple Crown winner. And it's the first time in as many years that a horse carrying that title will take his chances at the spa. That's right. American Feral preparing to run in the one and a quarter mile Midsummer Derby tomorrow. But can he pull off a win only one other Triple Crown winner has accomplished? Over the next hour, we'll not only look more into American Pharaoh and his historic year, but also the history of the Travers and the thoroughbreds that were defeated. Before we get into all that, we want to check in with News 10 ABC's Liana Bonavita for a look at how the Travers Stakes is shaping up this year. Ten horses all finding out their fate as to which post they would break from in the 146th running of the Travers Stakes. And when all was said and done at the post position draw, the big story the Triple Crown champion, American Pharaoh, will break from the two-hole. American Pharaoh. Here we go. Number two. Number two. Post two for American Pharaoh. With morning line odds of one to five, the overwhelming favorite. So much so that... I don't think post position was a real concern for American Pharaoh. But the plot thickens. And on the rail will be upstart. If upstart doesn't scratch, according to his trainer Rick Violet. I am 50-50. So, if upstart doesn't run, the Triple Crown winner gets the rail. He's a good enough horse to overcome anything, but there's always a little bit more chance for something to go wrong when you have the rail. But Pharaoh has proven himself from the rail before. They're off in the Preakness. In fact, he won the Preakness from that very position. American Farrell is so tactical. He can go to the lead. He can lay second or third. He's got good speed. He's such a good horse. We're just looking for reasons that maybe we can beat him. Kieran McLaughlin's Frosted is the second choice in the morning line at 6-1. to one. The Belmont and Jim Dandy runner-up, a serious contender, breaking from post six. He has a, a legitimate chance to win, and if American Pharaoh doesn't have his best day, and we do, we have a chance. The horse that beat Frosted in the Jim Dandy, Texas Red, is the third choice. His owner's happy to have stayed in Saratoga for their Traverse prep. This track has so many... Uh, twerks and quirks, you know, and to be able to be here and be established in the track has done so much for the horse. A luxury Haskell runner-up Keen Ice won't have, but trainer Dale Romans says he looks better than ever. Oh, he's good. He's getting stronger and better every day. He's a little arrogant. And, uh, you know, you like to see a horse. When I first got him, he was kind of timid. He's come to himself. He's a little arrogant now and, and, and really happy. The remaining five horses are all long shots, starting on the morning line at 20 to 1 or higher. But VE Day proved last year, after winning the Crowland Stakes earlier in the meet, that a horse doesn't have to be a favorite to win at Saratoga. And then again, he wasn't up against Triple Crown winner American Pharaoh. So American Pharaoh's one to five on the morning line, probably not the horse to bet if you're looking to make some money. But for that, we bring in Capital HB handicapper Seth Marrow. Seth, one to five on the morning line. Is that what you were? Expecting? Yeah, he's just head and shoulders above this three-year-old class, so certainly he was going to go off and will go off as a very short price favorite, deservedly so. Now, how do you make money? Well, you buy a ticket and put it on eBay as a souvenir maybe, but otherwise, maybe a little bit of an exact to play. I like Frosted a lot. Uh, second in the Jim Dandy, but I talked to his trainer, Karen McLaughlin, and he lost his shoe at the beginning of the Jim Dandy. So, Karen McLaughlin very hot right now. I think the coming out of that second place in the Jim Dandy, Frosted very intriguing, as is the winner of the Jim Jim Dandy, Texas Red. So maybe American Pharaoh over one or the other of those in an exacto. Well, both of those horses that you mentioned, Texas Red and Frosted, having run in the Jim Dandy, have a, a race on this track. How much could that potentially help? It's really important. And a horse like American Pharaoh just has so much talent, he can maybe mitigate that. But clearly, a race over the track benefits horses. And with uh, Texas Red, Frosted having that race in the Jim Dandy, that's going to be a benefit to them, help them out, certainly. And I wouldn't knock anybody who just took a shot at a long shot in a race like this. Why not? If something crazy happens, maybe you'll come up a big winner. And you get beyond those 
three, all the prices are going to be huge. Absolutely. $10 to show or something like that because it always feels better leaving the track up as opposed to down. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much. As they say, Saratoga is the graveyard of champions, so you never know what could happen potentially taking a shot on one of those long shots. Thanks, Liana. Now that we know what to expect for this year's Travers, what are the chances that American Ferrell will come away with a win? Saratoga is known as the Graveyard of Champions, and for good reason. Many a great horse has fallen at the spa. Former jockey and racing analyst Richard Migliori has some insight for us. I know Triple Crown winners' um, records in the Travers aren't great, but frankly, most of them didn't get to run in the Travers. I just think American Ferrell is the best horse. I think he's have, he'd have to be really unlucky to lose. Migliori pretty confident in American Pharaoh's racing ability, but what does he think about the chance post position and how will it affect the race? I actually think the inside position is good for American Pharaoh. If upstart scratches, all right, so he gets one, um, which I think is actually better than two. You don't have um, the fear of getting pinched between two horses. You have a lot of extra space to the inside. So if you did break a half a step slow, let's say, or were backing up when the break came, you wouldn't get shut off right away. You'd have an opportunity to let him run up the rail. Um, and I think with as much of a run to the first turn as you have, the post positions really don't play, usually play a big factor in the Travers. Nine other horses will take on American Pharaoh for the Travers Trophy. So which one of them has the best chance to come away with a win? Here's what the MIG thinks. You have um, a horse like Frosted, who's trained up here since um, the Belmont Stakes, you know, and, and, and I think that's an advantage, training on this racetrack. I watched his workout, his last workout for the race. I thought it was sensational. I think he's doing great. Um, Texas Red, obviously last year's Breeders' Cup Juvenile winner, is another nice horse that I think the mile and a quarter will suit well. I don't see the quite the same energy level from him since the Jim Dandy as I do from Frosted, but um, I think those are the two most logical horses. And Upstart, you know, he's two for two here, and he's been training here as well. And uh, I kind of hope he does start because I, I think he's a horse with a lot of ability and he trains here, he's based in New York, he's a New York bred. I think it would be appropriate if he ran in the Travers. Of course, just like with any race, nothing is certain. We will have to wait for tomorrow to see who comes away with the trophy. And if you don't have tickets for this year's Travers Stakes, you're out of luck. Tickets for the big race are all sold out. Naira made the decision to cap attendance at 50,000, and it only took a week before all the tickets were gone. Naira officials are urging fans not to travel to the race course without tickets in hand. Clubhouse and grandstand season passes, however, will be accepted on Travers Day. For those of you who do have tickets, here's what you need to know. Gates open at 7 a.m. Post time, 11.35. The Travers Stakes set for 5.46 p.m. The headline of the $5.5 million day featuring six grade one stakes. Naira officials are encouraging fans to arrive early, stay late, and give plenty of time for travel. 50,000 fans will witness the richest Travers in history at $1.6 million. The purse raised as long as Pharaoh starts. The winner is now guaranteed $850,000. That's up from 675000 The announcement that American Pharaoh will run at the spa came after weeks of speculation. All of that speculation, of course, coming to an end this past Sunday with one simple tweet. This tweet by Justin Zayat is simple. It says, quote, here we come, hashtag Faratoga. That tweet coming shortly after the champion horse had a workout this past Sunday at the Del Mar racetrack in California. Every indication from his camp is that it was a strong workout and that this was the tipping point to bring him here to Faratoga. And Naira President and CEO Chris Kay couldn't be more excited. I will never forget the wall of sound that enveloped us at the Belmont Stakes. And it would be great to have that same kind of moment here again. And for all the fans in the Capital Region, here's a chance to see a Triple Crown winner in action, the first time in 37 years. So we're just thrilled that we'll have that opportunity. Kay's not the only one who's excited about the Triple Crown winner running in the Travers. The fans also excited to witness the event here at the Spa. The best horses should run in the best races at the most historic racetrack. American Pharaoh coming up is great for racing. We haven't missed the Travers in 40 years, and uh, we're anticipating uh, American Feral to put on quite a show. It's great for the sport, and uh, if he wins the Travers, it's going to be great for his legacy because that means he'll have won here, and if he wins the Breeze Cup at Keeneland, he'd have won out of Del Mar, the Triple Crown tracks, he'd have gone all across America and won at all the most historic tracks. We expect a good race, and uh, I hope he does come, uh, but I won't believe it until I see the saddle on him. Coming up. 
more Pharaoh. After all, he could be considered one of the greatest athletes of our time. And he was definitely treated like one when his plane landed at Albany International Airport. We'll take you to his arrival. Plus, thousands turned out to watch the Triple Crown champ work out with the other Travers contenders. How he was looking before the big race. American Pharaoh arrived earlier this week at Albany International Airport on Air Horse One. Yes, you heard right. A fitting name for one amazing athlete. News 10 ABC's Nicole Hart was there for the big moment as the Triple Crown winner landed in the Capital Region. American Pharaoh arrived here at the Saratoga Race Course early Wednesday afternoon. On Saturday, 50,000 people will fill this backyard in the grandstand, all to see American Pharaoh, the first Triple Crown winner in decades, cross this line. But before he reaches that finish line, he had to get here. American Pharaoh is finally here. Arriving in style on Air Horse One. Triple Crown winner American Pharaoh making a grand entrance. And making his presence known, hamming it up for the fans and our cameras. After AP was loaded into a trailer with his barn pony Smokey, he was off to the races with an entourage fit for a king or a pharaoh. What a great day. This is the first time in 37 years that our sport has crowned a triple crown champion. And on Saturday, the entire world is going to be focusing their eyes right here at Saratoga Racecourse for the running of the Travers. Reporting at the Saratoga Racecourse, Nicole Hart, News 10 ABC. Everyone is wanting a piece of history this week. Trainer John Terranova Stables is actually housing the champion while he's here at the spa since Bob Baffert doesn't have his own stables. News 10 ABC's Rachel Yankuna spoke with Terranova about this rare, perhaps once in a lifetime opportunity. Crews roll out what might as well be a red carpet for this historical moment. American Pharaoh saunters off his trailer into the Terra Nova stables. He's everything you'd imagine a Triple Crown winner to be. Trainer John Terra Nova and his crew spent the day putting the finishing touches on their stable, creating a stall fit for a king. Get it set up as best best as we possibly can right now. So, so far so good. You guys excited? Yeah, very excited, yeah. Can't wait to see him. Terra Nova has known American Pharaoh's trainer Bob Baffert since 91. His horses always stay with them when they travel east, and American Pharaoh was no exception. Staying in his barn during the Belmont Stakes. It's a dream come true to be in the presence of greatness. And despite the excitement surrounding the horse's arrival, Terra Nova and his crew stay relaxed. We just try and stay as laid back as possible. Patiently waiting for this moment to see their old friend, American Pharaoh, back at Terra Nova's barn, only this time in Saratoga and as one of the greats. We were thrilled, you know, during the Belmont Stakes and just getting to have a chance to be around a horse like this because really none of us have ever seen something like this, you know, before. And who knows if we'll get the chance again. So it's really special. Rachel Young Kunis, News 10 ABC. Since his arrival Wednesday, American Farrell has been hitting the dirt to get a feel for the quirky track, as Baffert likes to call it. In front of nearly 15,000 fans this morning, Farrell and the other Travers contenders showed off their skills. The pre-Travers Friday morning workout, an annual tradition here at the spa. The main track opened exclusively to Travers entries as they prepare for the big race tomorrow. The public invited to watch the horses run as they get a feel for the track. Of course, all eyes were on Farrell during the workout, and trainer Bob Baffert says everything went very smoothly. So we had a nice little gallop today, and um, looks like everything went really smooth. He, I could tell, he he really liked the track. He uh, was floating around there like he usually does. He was moving around there pretty well, so it looked like he handled it really, really well. So that, we were looking for something like that, something positive. So, so um, I'm, you know, I feel very, very. Uh, happy the way he went today. And the fans couldn't get enough of Farrell this morning, erupting into cheers as he ran around the track. And of course, all of us here at News 10 ABC look forward to seeing him and all the Travers contenders run tomorrow. 37 years. That's how long it took for another horse to capture the Triple Crown. We'll take you back to the historic moment when American Farrell crossed the wire at Belmont Park and with it, claiming his spot in history. Plus, one man was not only lucky enough to witness all three Triple Crown races, he was in the unique position to make Make the historic call. We talk with Larry Colmus about that special moment when we return. 
Now that we've had a look at American Pharaoh's preparations for the Travers, let's take a look at who he is and his career so far. Pharaoh's owned by Ahmed Zayed of Zayed Stables and trained by Bob Baffert. Most of the time, his jockey is Victor Espinosa. His sire, Pioneer of the Nile, won the Santa Anita Derby and ran second in the 2009 Kentucky Derby. His dam, Little Prince's Mama, doesn't have a very distinguished racing career, but through her, American Pharaoh is a fifth-generation descendant of Secretariat. Since his debut last year, American Pharaoh has only lost once, and that was his very first race. He was named American Champion two-year-old male horse last year, even though he only ran three times. And, of course, he went on this year to win the Triple Crown, a title that many tried to obtain but failed, the elusive crown remaining untouched for 37 years. Let's take a look back at that historic moment. but he will be sent to the lead by Victor Espinosa. So he waits no longer right to the front for American Pharaoh in the race to the first turn, but he did not come out of the gate all that well. Frosted is away running in second position. Materiality is third to the outside. A ground-saving run for Mubtahij, who's right behind American Pharaoh into that first turn, then made from Lucky. Keen Ice, Taylor Verve, and the trailer is from Ento. The opening quarter mile was 24 seconds flat. A sensible fraction for American Pharaoh, who leads the way on that sweeping first turn here at Belmont Park. Continues to be a moderate tempo up the back stretch here. And it is American Pharaoh who leads the way by three quarters of a length. And materiality keeps the pressure on in second. Moob Tahij is third on the inside. And then comes Keen Ice in fourth. Frosted is fifth. Made from Lucky. Ridden along to keep up with the field. He's sixth and he's four and a half lengths off of American Pharaoh. Fremento and Taylor Verve are at the back of the pack. So, American Pharaoh is halfway home in the Belmont. Three quarters went in one thirteen and two fifth seconds. And he begins his run into the far turn. Three quarters of the length ahead of Materiality in second. And then it's Keen Ice on the outside of Moob Tahiz frosted in traffic behind them and then made from lucky on the outside around the far turn and American Pharaoh continues to lead the way. He's on top by three quarters of a length. Moob Tahiz is off the rail and now he's a length behind in second and American Pharaoh kicks away. American Pharaoh has opened up a two length lead as they come to the top of the stretch and frosted has moved up into second and they're into the stretch and American Pharaoh makes his run for glory as they come into the final furlong. Frosted is second with one eighth of a mile to go. American Pharaoh's got a two-length lead. Frosted is all out at the 16th pole. And here it is. The 37-year wait is over. American Pharaoh is finally the one. American Pharaoh has won the triple a truly historic moment in horse racing this year. And one man not only witnessed all three races that make up the Triple Crown, he got to call them. Now, Larry Colmus is at the spa. And as News 10 ABC's Ryan Peterson tells us, it's a moment he will never forget. That was the most incredible moment that you could ever, ever imagine when he accomplished that feat. And just to, to have been a small part of it and to have called that race was just amazing. Naira race caller Larry Colmus recalling the day American Pharaoh rode into the history books. Colmus is no stranger to the announcer's booth, nor the Triple Crown. He began calling that series of races back in 2011. But none would compare to that record-setting day on June 6th. The lead up to the race, I was I was definitely nervous. You're going to be. But when the gates opened and they took off, uh, you're sort of just describing what's going on. And I purposely scaled things back a little bit so that I wasn't over the top. And when you realized at the top of the stretch that he was gone and it was over, then I just let it go and, and had fun with the moment. And it was just unbelievable. Unbelievably loud. Colmus is perched some seven stories up in that announcer's booth, but with a crowd some 90,000 strong, he felt every bit of that celebration. The place was rocking. It was so loud. You could feel the excitement, the energy of the crowd as the horses were coming down the stretch and then after the race when he came back and Victor Espinosa did a victory lap. The place was bonkers. The building was shaking and it was just what the greatest thing I've ever seen. Now, needless to say, Colmus is just as excited to call the Travers and he reminds us Saratoga is referred to as the graveyard of champions for a reason. Farrell will only be the fourth Triple Crown winner to run in the Midsummer Derby and only the second winner if he's victorious. 
World Away was the last one back in 1941. Affirmed finished first, but was disqualified in the Travers in 1978. So that would be very cool to see the Triple Crown winner come here and then have him win the Travers. Ryan Peterson, News 10 ABC. It has been 74 years since a Triple Crown winner has stood in the winner's circle at the Travers. Many have tried. Only one has succeeded. Still ahead, we'll introduce you to the one horse able to accomplish that feat, as well as relive some of the greatest Travers upsets. Plus, a field of 10 is hoping to get a stab at the Triple Crown champ in the upcoming race. But there's one horse many consider as the one to beat American Pharaoh. News 10 ABC's Liana Bonavito will introduce us to Texas Red. The Saratoga Racecourse has been around for more than a century, hosting horse races as far back as the 1800s. But in all that time, only one Triple Crown winner has stood in the winner's circle after the Travers, and that was 74 years ago. That horse was named Whirl Away, and it happened in 1941. The chestnut horse was bred at Calumet Farm in Lexington, Kentucky in 1938. Made his debut in 1940, but his behavior in races was so erratic that his trainer, Ben Jones, had to make some changes. Whirl Away had a habit of bearing out. He would drift towards the middle of the racetrack. So Jones created a blinker to cover his right eye, and it worked. Whirl Away became the fifth horse to win the Triple Crown. Later that year, he ran in the Traverse Stakes, and to this day remains the only Triple Crown victor to also win the Traverse, which some call the fourth leg of the Triple Crown. We will have to wait until tomorrow to see if American Pharaoh will become the second horse to accomplish this feat. Other horses have been close. In 1930, fans came out to watch Triple Crown winner Gallant Fox take on the 1929 two-year-old champion, which won. But the weather played a huge role in this Traverse Stakes. It was a, not the, just the greatest upset in horse racing. I think it was the greatest upset in sports. Despite the heavy rain, thousands of fans turned out that day to watch the battle between the two. Which one and Gallant Fox remained heads apart in the first quarter mile, but that's when Jim Dandy began moving up. During the final stretch, Jim Dandy swept to the lead and hit the wire six lengths ahead of Gallant Fox. It really put in perspective on it, uh, Gallant Fox won three more races, all six. He won, so he had ran ten, ran ten times in, in 1930, lost once, and all the other nine races were all stakes races. Jim Dandy, that was the only race he won all year, and he's won for 20. Despite his not-so-great career, Saratoga named a race after the horse, the Grade 2 Jim Dandy, which is considered a prep race for the Travers. Another Triple Crown winner almost came away with the Travers win. A firm who captured the Triple Crown in 1978 finished first, but was later disqualified. The stakes race that day was the final meeting of one of the greatest rivalries in the history of horse racing. Affirmed taking on Aladar one final time. Before the Travers, both horses won at Saratoga. Affirmed winning the Jim Dandy, Aladar in the Whitney Handicap. But coming into the 1978 Travers, Affirmed had a 7-2 edge over Aladar. The two had not competed against each other since Affirmed won the Belmont to snatch the Triple Crown. Out of the gate, Affirmed had a narrow lead over Shake, Shake, Shake. But Aladar managed to squeeze through an opening. And that's when the foul happened. Ali Dar suddenly has dropped back very suddenly and appears to be out of the race. During the race, uh, Fern was in the lead and he cut over and almost brought Aladar to his knees. There was no, there was no doubt that he committed a foul. A Fern finished the race in first place, one and three quarter lengths ahead, and Aladar came in second. Immediately, the inquiry sign was flashed, and the stewards decided to disqualify a firm's win. That was the last time the two rivals would meet. It's no argument that the Traverse Stakes is one of the biggest races during the Saratoga meet. And this year, it will not only be big, but historic. That's because for the first time in 37 years, a Triple Crown champ is coming to the spa. But nine other horses are hoping to claim the Traverse Trophy, and with it, glory. Still ahead, a look at the big race and American Pharaoh's competition. Good evening, and thanks for staying with us for our Travers special. The big race just one day away. And, of course, the big news this year is that the first Triple Crown champion in 37 years will make an appearance and race here at the historic Saratoga race course. A perfect setting for a historic race that could truly end historically. If Farrow comes away with the win tomorrow, he will only be the second horse in history to capture the Triple Crown and the Travers Trophy, something that hasn't happened in 74 years. But will he be able to do it? We'll have to wait till tomorrow to see, but there 
there are nine horses hoping to take a stab at the victor. News 10 ABC's Liana Bonavita joins us now with more on one horse that could beat American Pharaoh. The general consensus within the horse racing world is if American Pharaoh runs his race, there's no chance he'll lose, and he's proven that, having won eight straight. But there is one horse who's waited patiently for his chance to take down the Triple Crown champ. American Pharaoh is all class. Scintillating performance from American Pharaoh in the front runner stakes. Eleven months ago, American Pharaoh wins his second race as a two-year-old. The front runner stakes reinforcing that Pharaoh is the two-year-old to beat. Running third in that race, Texas Red, the rematch set for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, where the top two-year-olds in the game race towards supremacy. So where was American Pharaoh? in his stall with an apparent foot bruise. I'm going for this horse. So we fast forward to the Kentucky Derby, and this is where the two would meet again. That is, until Texas Red was sidelined with foot problems of his own. So he's off the Triple Crown Trail altogether, watching as history was made. Now both horses are healthy. Pharaoh prepping with the Haskell, Texas Red with the Jim Dandy. The rematch, nearly a year in the making, finally slated on the Saratoga stage, even though Texas Red's trainer and co-owner Keith DeSormo warns against the hype. It's not our moment. It's American Pharaoh's moment, there's no doubt. But he says his horse does improve every day. If he gets better with age, stronger with age, that means he's going to get faster, and that means... Wow. Plus, he has a race over the track already. Any horse that runs well in the Jim Dandy that are, you know, it really, I think it's a, it, it's an advantage to have a race over the track. It's got to make a difference, but is that enough of a difference to beat uh, a horse of his caliber? I don't know. We'll find out Saturday whether or not Texas Red has what it takes to cross this finish line first, but either way, it's going to be fireworks down the stretch. Reporting from the track, I'm Liana Bonavita, News 10, ABC. Thanks, Liana. And of course, Naira's looking forward to tomorrow, especially after it was announced that American Pharaoh would run. News 10 ABC's Josh Rotenberg caught up with Naira president and CEO Chris Kay to ask him about Travers Day. Saturday, we have what I call Saratoga's version of the Breeders' Cup. Six grade one races, one grade two race, and of course, the 146th running of the Travers with American Pharaoh, Texas Red, Frosted, Keen Ice, Incredible horses. It will be a fantastic day. Keen Ice came in seventh in the Derby, third at the Belmont, and second in the Haskell. Frosted is the grade one Winspires.com Wood Memorial winner. He also came in fourth in the Derby and second in the Belmont. The other contenders in the race are Texas Red, Fermento, King of New York, Mid-Ocean, Smart Transition, Tale of the Verve, and Upstart. The 146th Traverse Stakes is about to become, perhaps, the biggest thing to hit the Spa City in a long while. A sold-out capacity crowd of 50,000 fans will witness the richest Travers in history at $1.6 million. The original purse was set at $1.25, but will now be raised because Farrell is coming. But if you don't have a ticket, Naira says don't even bother coming to the race course, unless you have clubhouse and grandstand season passes. Naira officials are encouraging fans to arrive early, stay late, and allow plenty of time for travel. All the tickets for the Travers Stakes may be sold out, but if you still want to catch the race, the Saratoga Casino Raceway has got you covered. Many restaurants and bars across Saratoga will also air the race. Just head to tenantoga.com for the full interactive map. Tomorrow's the big day, the 146th running of the Traverse Stakes featuring Triple Crown winner American Farrell. The champ taking on nine other competitors for a chance to stand in the winner's circle and claim the Traverse Trophy. Here's a final look at the field that will run in the 2015 Midsummer Derby. American Pharaoh will break from post two. He's the one to five favorite. Frosted will break from post six. His odds are six to one. With odds of 12 to one, Keen Ice will break from post seven. Smart Transition will break from post 10 with odds at 20 to one. Long shot 50 to one, Keen of New York will break from position number nine. From position eight, Tale of Verb with 30 to one odds. And finally, Upstart will break from position number one or the rail with odds of 15 to one. And remember, tickets for Travers Day are sold out. Now I was saying, if you don't have a ticket, stay away from the race course. If you do have a ticket, make time for travel. Arrive early, stay late, 
and give yourself extra time. The horses are ready to go, and you know what? We are too. Be sure to catch our live Travers show tomorrow. First one on News 10 ABC at 7 a.m., and then on News 10 ABC on Fox 23 starting at 6 p.m. You don't want to miss all the action in this potentially history-making race. From all of us at News 10 ABC, good night and have a good day tomorrow.